half a day. Today, we continue to face a challenge that requires us to give our total commitment to protecting the health and well being of the people of Guam. I submitted a request for a presidential disaster declaration for Guam in response to the COVID 19 pandemic. If approved, this would authorize the president to provide supplemental federal disaster assistance. I have requested the following FEMA disaster assistance program. Assistance to individuals and households, which can include the following programs. Individuals and household programs, crisis counseling program, disaster case management, disaster unemployment assistance, disaster legal services, disaster supplemental nutrition assistance program. I've also requested public assistance, category B, to include emergency protective measures and assistance for local governments and certain private nonprofit organizations for actions taken to prevent or reduce long-term risk to life and property from natural hazards. I also received word that the U.S. Senate package includes $111 million in direct assistance to Guam. Our federal contacts say this is in addition to other programs already in the works. And we expect passage out of the Senate and House of Representatives soon. I want to assure you that help is on the way. But leadership in hard times also means being honest with the current situation. This morning, I met with the business community to discuss their concerns. The fight against COVID-19 requires disruption of our regular economic activities. My top two priorities are the health of the people and the health of the economy. But let me be clear, I will not sacrifice the health and safety of the community. However, I understand that employees and employers are uncertain about the future. Truthfully, we don't know when this will end, but we are preparing for it. That is why I have invited Dr. Ricky Hernandez, Deputy Administrator of GITA, to highlight the economic recovery initiatives, which consist of the various economic recovery tools at our disposal. Throughout this struggle, we have said that our Manamku are our most vulnerable population, but there are others as well. No one can exercise good hygiene, keep clean, or regularly wash their hands if they don't have a safe place to sleep. That is why Josh and I asked our team to develop short-term shelter for the homeless. No plans have been finalized, but we are actively looking at shelter options that are rapidly deployable and cost-effective. As we fight the impacts of COVID-19 today, it encourages me to see our people helping when they can. Every day, we will be featuring COVID heroes, people who are going out of their way to support our frontliners and those experiencing economic hardship due to COVID-19. Today, I want to personally thank the volunteers at Guam uh, Department of Education's Grab and, Grab and Go School Meals. For many children, their only source of nutrition comes from the school. This program alleviates the hardship many families are facing. Volunteers include GDOE staff, Sodexo, Surf Guam Commission, AmeriCorps, village mayors, school organizations, and parents. We thank you for all that you are doing. The government of Guam is taking bold and decisive actions to respond to uncertain and unprecedented times. My message to the people of Guam is simple. Though we must remain physically distant, we are closer than we have ever been before. Look after yourselves, look after your family, look after our man uncle. There are tough days ahead but we will get through this together. I'd like to call in uh, Linda DeNorsi, who will give you uh, our update on the cases. Linda. Thank you, Governor. Yesterday, we conducted 40 tests. And of the 40 tests, 32 were negative, five were positive, and three had to be rerun. The total testing from March 12, 2020 to March 25, 2020 amounts to 270. 
And of that 270 tests that were conducted, 233 were negative and 37 are positive. In regards to the COVID-37 patients that we have, 25 are currently in home isolation, two are at the GMHA SNU, nine are at GMHA, one has died. In terms of the demographic distribution of these COVID patients, 11 are at Northern region of the island, 16 are at Central, eight are at South, and two are pending determination for a grand total of 37. In regards to the age group, to this date, we have no children up to 19 years of age. For those 20 to 29 years of age, we have 39. COVID patients between the ages of 30 to 39, four. Ages 40 to 49, six patients. 50 to 59, five. 60 to 69, 14. 70 to 79, two. 80 to 89 years of age, two. And 90 age of 90 years and older, one. And again, that's a grand total of 37. In regards to the gender, 16 are males, 21 are females. The medical status of these patients, 25 are stable, 11 are hospitalized. And the breakdown of those 11, we have eight in the inpatient facility at GMH. One is currently in the ICU, two are at the SNU, and one of course has died. The travel history of these patients, one came from Japan, seven from the Philippines, zero from South Korea, and two from the U.S. Navy. 27 did not have any travel history. I'd like to now bring up uh, Ricky Hernandez, who will give you um, uh, will give you information about economic stimulus that we will be seeing down the pipeline. Ricky. Top it in. Uh, thank you, Governor and Lieutenant Governor. Um, again, my name is Ricky Hernandez, and uh, the Governor has tasked me with working with uh, my fellow cabinet members and colleagues uh, in coordination uh, for locally and federally related economic stimulus um, uh, programs and, and initiatives. And so what I'm tasked to, to do is basically uh, work with our business community, as the Governor had mentioned. And uh, we want to ensure that the implementation of many of the what has already been um, what has already been implement, uh, enacted is uh, is properly implemented and complied with by our business community. Uh, I understand that the business community has a lot of questions in our meeting this morning with the business community. There were a lot of questions regarding uh, economic uh, recovery initiatives such as the uh, Paid Sick Leave uh, Act and the Emergency Family and Medical Leave Act that has been already um, enacted by um, by the federal government. And we we're feverishly we were working very uh, closely with our cabinet members to, and our federal counterparts to ensure that those questions are answered and that these federal uh, economic recovery initiatives are, are uh, properly implemented to the benefit of our business community and the individuals and workforce that, uh, that they employ. Uh, through our GITA website, we have summarized many of the federal and local economic uh, recovery initiatives. And we'd like uh, to just point everyone, especially in the business community, to visit our website at investguam.com uh, slash coronavirus uh, we do have some presentations and summaries of some of these economic recovery initiatives. There are several that are related to um, uh, um, renters or uh, homeowners, I mean, and, uh, and uh, moratoriums on evictions and foreclosures related to specific times, types of federally black backed um, um, loans that the banks have uh, issued and, and, and what uh, federal agencies such as USDA has, uh, has issued to our, our homeowners. And so uh, that's just one example. And so if you visit our website at investguam.com slash coronavirus, uh, there are presentations and resources there for our business community to take a look at. Um, and you'll find a breakdown of each of, some, each of these initiatives that, uh, uh, that are available. And as information on federal guidance becomes available, uh, we will continue to uh, work with our business community to, uh, to get that information out. And so again, I thank the governor and uh, we will continue to work with our, uh, my fellow cabinet members to uh, coordinate with the business community to ensure that all questions that are asked can, uh, can be answered. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. Um, we're open for questions now. And I just like to remind everybody, uh, again, we're going to do this for one round. Uh, and um, it's one question, one follow up. We'll start with the Guam Daily Post. Nick, your question. Hi, good afternoon, Governor. 
Um, so many people uh, either, I know we just spoke about the assistance for businesses and the concerns coming out of there, but there's still a lot of the concerns about people uh, losing their jobs or a loss of, of hours uh, at work. So are we tracking those numbers and um, how can they apply for some of the, the financial assistance like food stamps and Medicare and MIP like that? It's like that. Okay, so um, Nick, uh, that's why I have passed uh, Ricky, and Ricky's actually been working with the business community um, to get those numbers in terms of the uh, number of people that have been displaced as a result of this uh, coronavirus and number of hours also that, it, that, that has been uh, decreased because of this coronavirus. So I don't really have those numbers right off the hand, but we are working very closely uh, with them to get those numbers. As far as applying, um, it looks like everything is going to go through FEMA and also the Department of Labor. So they, De La Sola, in terms of employee benefits and unemployment and uh, what kinds of programs are there for people that uh, are unemployed, uh, it, could, it would go through the Department of Labor and and Ricky and Dave De Sola are uh, working closely together to get the details and the mechanisms. Even the federal government uh, is, is not, does not have the complete uh, details and mechanisms on how to do this. What they did say is that FEMA is going to be the point of, um, I guess the central uh, contact for these um, federal assistance. And make your follow up question. Thank you, Governor. Uh, so the second question, you had mentioned a couple times this week about uh, putting protections in place for people who could potentially be evicted. Uh, so do we have a timeline yet for how soon you will enact that? Yeah, you know, this CARE, um, I, uh, I went through this bill, the CARE packet, uh, CARE stimulus. It's about 400 pages, but uh, there's a provision there that uh, has protection for the people that are renting. I think one of the provisions says that they cannot be evicted and that they will be providing some uh, resource and some assistance to the homeowners. Um, what was, what was, did I answer your question? Was there something else? It, the question was, uh, where are you going to, when will you be putting out a directive? Oh, okay. So yeah. um, I've been talking to my legal people and as soon as I can uh, get the answers, which they respond very uh, easily and very fast, uh, I will be uh, making the announcement. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Nick. Uh, next we have uh, QAM Lester, your question. Yes, th uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Governor, um, I, I believe the uh, Senate has just passed the economic stimulus bill um, and assuming it passes the house and the president signs it i think one of the provisions that is um, of most interest to the people is the individual direct payments and as i understand it um, the states are supposed to pay that and then be reimbursed by treasury do we have the cash flow right now to cover those payments for, for guam residents you know, I need to look at that. Nesta, I don't have uh, detailed information about it. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be giving the monies right away so we can pay it. Um, and I don't, I, your, your question of do we have the cash flow, I need to work with our fiscal team to, um, to get that information and to do the analysis because as, as we speak, things are evolving at the, uh, um, the Senate and the House, although I think the numbers and the programs are set, they've been debating this over many, many days, uh, the details is what's not worked out. So um, if we don't have to front it or make it an advance, I prefer to do it that way. And if, if it is so that they can uh, directly just download, I know they're also talking about direct, directly depositing it to the uh, individual. Okay. That's okay. Um, okay. Um, so the other question is, um, I'm, I'm interested, um, as, as you are aware, the uh, Navy announced yesterday that there were four sailors from the USS Theodore that had uh, contracted the, um, the virus and are now uh, being um, treated at, at the Naval Hospital. It's um, cons very conceivable that many others on the close quarters within that carrier 
also contracted the disease. So is it conceivable that uh, that ship may have to come to Guam and port here and also quarantine dozens, if not hundreds of other sailors? And what is the contingency by the local government if that were to happen? So, um, Nestor, I have been in close communication with Admiral Minoni. He's been very, um, um, he's been very transparent with me and we have had discussions. Uh, I would like to defer the question to him because he is the official person that would give you that information uh, much more appropriately. So could you ask him? Just we, we, we did and, and they wouldn't say anything. But um, are you aware? Have they have they talked to you about that, that particular scenario? On his behalf, I would defer to him because he is the official um, commander and head of this part of our uh, naval uh, military facilities. What would be your reaction then, Governor, if if they were they, they had to bring the carrier here? Because you did um, you did stop the cruise ship from coming here that had, that had um, passengers with the virus. Yes, what is sir. your view on that? Yes, sir, I think the governor answered your question. Let's move on. Uh, PDN, Jasmine, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Thanks, governor. So sort of piggybacking off Nestor's first question, the $111 million is welcome news. Do you have a timeline? How soon can Guam residents expect checks or some sort of relief from I, that? I, I would have been yesterday, but I don't have control over the timeline. I do know that uh, President Trump and, and uh, you know, as much as many criticisms about him, President Trump is very, very adamant to jumpstart the economy. And he's very, very, very concerned about the livelihood of the American people to include us. And uh, my understanding is as soon as that gets paid, but he wants to push that out right away. Um, so as, he's really anxious to also sign the piece of legislation and uh, you know, just from reading um, the literature and the media internationally, it looks like they'll probably have it looks like it will pass the House maybe today, tomorrow, and I'm pretty sure uh, President Trump already has his pen ready to sign it. And your next question, Jasmine? Yes, going back to rent, there's now like a change.org petition asking for rent freezes and mortgages being freezed on for Guam. Yeah. Are you taking any concrete steps to help people who are asking for this? As I had, uh, I, I don't remember whether it was Nestor or Nick that asked that question. Um, <clears throat> the provision, uh, one of the provisions of the, of the law that's being uh, circulated in the house is that there is a section there that addresses uh, homeowners and renters and even uh, for forbearance of mortgages for a couple of months and even I think to the end of the fiscal year. So I would look at that, but also I do, as I said, I have been in discussions with my team um, and our legal people to see what we can do uh, in terms of, uh, um, you know, um, mandating or directing uh, or asking the uh, homeowners to not evict people. So no concrete steps as of right now? Well, my concrete step right now is talking with my legal people. Thank you, Jasmine. We'll move on to Mariana's Business Journal. Rianne, do you have a question? Uh, no question, thank you. Thank you, Rianne. Pacific Island Time. Bill, do you have a question? Yes, ma'am, I do. So my first <clears throat> Yes? Sorry, Phil, are you there? Phil, is your mic on, Phil? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Sorry, Phil, we can't hear you. We'll, we'll catch you after PNC. Okay. PNC, Kevin, are you there? Go ahead. Go 
ahead, Kevin. I, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, now, we can hear you. You can hear me now. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, uh, Governor, it seems that uh, Congressman San Nicolas disagrees with the status of the relief bill in the Senate. And uh, your estimate that 111 million is available for Guam, he called it inaccurate and premature and has pointed to another bill, relief bill in the House. What is your reaction to his comments? My reaction is my information is not premature. My information is as accurate as what the Senate has passed and is going through the House. So what I have said to the public and to the people is correct information and it is not premature. And your second question, Kevin? Um, the hotels are empty. A lot of hotels have a backlog of perishable food and supplies. We understand that quality distributors this morning put on a sale of lobsters, more than a hundred sold out within an hour. Is that kind of activity authorized under your executive orders? I have selling food. Um, I think that's their business. And uh, if, if that's a way of, you know, uh, also providing more food to the people, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that, Kevin. I don't think we have to do any directives or mandates about that. Thank you, Governor. But thank you for the information. I didn't know it. Yeah. Thank you. Big line. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. We'll go back to Pacific Island time. Phil, uh, your question. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, cool. Your, your question, Phil? It might be his headphone. Are you able to type your question, Phil? Can you ask her? He's with uh, Pacific Island Time. Oh. Phil, can you hear yeah. us? Yes, I can. Okay, can you ask your question? Okay. Oh, we can't. Sorry, Phil. Phil, we can't. We can't hear your question. Okay, let me just. Can you try typing your question, Phil? Yes, I have a question now. Is he the last one? Yes, he's the last one. Oh, okay. Okay. This question is the Guam Republicans are putting a bill for Guam's economic stimulus. Are you for that too? Will you sign it into law? You know, I don't know what kind of bill they're putting forward. I have not seen it. Um, like any bill, I would give it in my um, due process and my review. Uh, but I cannot say if I support it or not because I don't know what the bill is and I don't, what, I don't know what the economic stimulus plan is that they are putting together. Okay, fill in your follow-up question. Can you go ahead and type it? I, I, you're typing a follow-up question, right? Yes. Okay. We can hear you if you want to just ask it. Okay, so with the department. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, we'll wait, we'll wait for your question. Okay, we'll do it. Another question, with DRT closed and many people need to renew their driver's license uh, and AR registration, Car if registration. they are able to register it, will the fees be waived and will, will we still 
be able, able to, to vehicle. operate the vehicles even if it is expired? Uh, yes to both. Okay. Cool. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. All right. Uh, Governor, do you want to just give closing remarks? I just want to say thank you again for this opportunity to speak before you. And I just want to say that, uh, as I have been saying all day, we are a loving community, we are a caring community, we are a generous community, and I personally appreciate all the support and understanding that you have done. But we must continue this uh, forward together and we must continue to comply and adhere to the mandates and the directives because that is the only way that we can provide the safety and the health of our community. It's the only way that we can get to zero cases per day. Thank you again for your understanding and your patience. I'd also like to uh, call upon the Lieutenant Governor, Josh Tenorio, to give some closing remarks. I just want to ask everybody to please stay home. There seems to be an uptake in traffic. Uh, and I would just say that if you're going to do your planning uh, to get your groceries, to uh, get your medical supplies, try and consolidate that, um, reduce your risk. There is a community transmission in Guam, and people do need to take every precautionary possible uh, precaution possible to reduce the impact that you'll have on your own families, on your children, on your parents. So please, uh, we ask you to stay home. For those of you that um, need to take some time for your mental health, uh, you know, we'll try and see what kind of activities you can do in your home, but please be mindful of your safety. That's the most important thing that we want to mention. So thank you very much and please be safe. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow.